Hello, sweet friend. My name is Micah. I hope you're cozy and settled in with a comforting drink. And I thought it would be nice to take some time for ourselves and journal together for a while. On screen, you can see that I am unboxing a new desk friend. I wanted to share that with you before we get into the journaling portion of it, because I'm actually journaling about this blind box unboxing and I'm going to use parts of the packaging for my pages. Um, yeah, I just treated myself <laughs> to a new friend to join me at my desk or on my desk. Uh, I love having little figures or little dolls and stuffed animals um, around me. And when I saw this series, um, which is from the company called Pop Mart, I just couldn't resist. The characters are so cute. Um, there's this girl character and um, sometimes she's also joined by some cute, cute cats. <laughs> so obviously I was hoping for one of the figures with a cat in it. But um, as you will see, I got something that is equally cute, even though it doesn't have a cat in it. Um, I pulled out that uh, card thinking, oh, how nice of the company to include this nice illustrated card of the figure that is considered the rare one in this series. <laughs> Until I pulled out... Um, my little figure and realized that of course it was the one that was on the card that the card matched the the figure that you get <laughs> and i couldn't believe it i got the rare one she's so cute her name is cotton candy daydream <laughs> which is uh, very precious and i think it is so lovely and so fitting that I would get a new desk friend who has her head in the clouds. And <laughs> uh, yeah, that that is quite me when I sit at my desk and think of illustrations to draw or uh, when I put together my journal pages. So yeah, I'm very excited to have her join me on my desk now. Um, do you have desk friends or little things that uh, join you while you journal. I love anything that is sort of doll-like, and so I often have some calico critters sitting on my desk, or I bring my Blythe doll and have her sit with me. Um, I definitely try to rotate them so that no one feels left out. <laughs> uh, yeah, very cute. Um, I just like how they bring a sense of playfulness to my desk, but also they just, yeah, feel nostalgic. Um, they remind me of childhood, and that's definitely also something that I try to bring into my journaling, but also into my illustration work. And so, yeah, it's good, good things, good vibes, good times. <laughs> but yeah, let me know what you like to decorate your desk with. Or are you someone who appreciates sort of a very minimal desk setup um, with less clutter on it? I, I, I can see how that is also helpful to just have a clean slate and then you can just focus on your work and nothing gets in the way. Because that's the one thing. If you, if you put too many cute things on your desk and then if you, for example, take out all your journaling supplies, it... At least for me, it can get quite crowded on my desk with just things everywhere. I definitely want to find more ways to be a bit more practical with my space. As you saw in that one clip there, I have this um, set of drawers on my desk. It's actually one from Ikea that a lot of people have. I just distressed it and I used some uh, wood what's it called? Uh, varnish? Or, yeah, I guess something like that to make it look like dark wood. And I 
put handles on it and it took me a lot of time <laughs> to DIY those and I love the way they look but they're not actually very practical. I definitely think they take up more space than the items that I store in it and for some reason the drawers are really hard to pull in and out so I might have to come up with something that is actually more useful and makes better use of the space but I'm so attached to them <laughs> they're so cute and I put so much time into them uh, so yeah I'm, I'm, I'm a little hesitant uh, the same goes with the plants that I have sitting on top of them. I love having plants on my desk, but yeah, they do take up some quite some space up there. But I think it's also important to just have a space that you feel uh, comfortable in and that invites you to sit down and stay for a while. So uh, usefulness, I guess, isn't everything or practicality isn't everything. Uh, as you saw, I took apart the box because I wanted those illustrations for my journal. And then I also had taken some photos of the cute, cute figure. And I printed them out in three different sizes because I wasn't quite sure what I would like to use. Um, and because I already sort of had an inkling that I would probably be making more than one page with all of those illustrations from the box that they all wouldn't fit. Um, I figured I would find a use for all of these or most of these. And these photos are printed on sticker paper, matte sticker paper that I get from online labels. And I quite like how photos turn out on that paper. I've been recently getting back into trying to take more photos for my journal. I feel like lately I've been very illustration focused or focused on collaging. And I used to be really passionate about photography. In fact, there was a time in high school where um, most of my creative projects were photography based rather than drawing based. And so... Um, I feel like I've neglected that hobby a little bit, uh, so I I'm, I want to get back into that. And so even though I could have just used the illustrations from the box, I, I took it as an opportunity to just um, set up a little, a little photo shoot <laughs> with the, with the figure, just, yeah, trying to engage um, a more of a variety of hobbies and I do like how photos look in journals and just think it's very neat that a journal is a place where I can combine all of these creative hobbies or creative pursuits that is not just one thing but that I can bring together illustrations and doodles and words and photography. It's just very, yeah, very unique in that way, I guess. Do you have a favorite medium to use in your journal or a specific, yeah, I guess artifact to include with your journaling, like photos, or is maybe writing your favorite part about journaling? Let me know in the comments. This washi tape I'm using right here has quickly become one of my favorites. It's by the creator Yeon Charm, if I'm saying that correctly. And I don't know what it is about this. I think the pattern just goes with everything. And it's not a stark black. It almost has a little bit of a purple undertone to it. And because it has this handmade feel, it's, it's quite soft, even though it has a lot of contrast. So yeah, I think it's uh, very, very charming. And here I am placing a beautiful sticker made by Erin Ware. I'm part of her Patreon. And this is such a gorgeous flower. I love the color palette of that. And I thought it went really well with the, with the photo. Um, it frames it really nicely. So I thought that that was really wonderful. 
So the context of this journaling session was actually that I told myself that I didn't have time to journal that week. I was feeling so stressed about work. I was feeling behind on everything on my to-do list. <laughs> and so I was sort of putting myself in this mindset of, no, 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 you don't have time for anything that isn't on your to-do list. You definitely have to work towards getting a check mark um, next to an item on your to-do list. And then I took a moment and reflected and I realized that the fact that I was feeling like I didn't have time to journal was probably a good indicator that I needed to make time to journal and find a moment to journal and just de-stress and calm down. Uh, and so I did. And I'm very glad because um, this really helped me feel uh, grounded again. It really just brought me back into the present moment and slowed me down. And I think in general, I have in recent weeks really gained in appreciation for the simple act of journaling. So, of course, I, as a, as a very visual person, love the finished result of looking at a visually appealing journal page. But there's so much to, good to say about the act of journaling, the, the process of journaling, of sitting down and engaging in something that is fun to you, but that is also tactile, you know, it's a, away from screens, and doing something for myself. There's just something really soothing about that. And so, yeah, I, I, I feel like I've gained a better understanding of the importance of the act itself, and that it's not just about the, the finished product of the journal page. I think that partially comes also from having started back up a journal that is just writing based. So I'm trying to follow some prompts that I have found in a book called Journaling for Joy. Um, I, I'm hoping to make a separate video about that because that book has some wonderful, wonderful journaling prompts and her whole um, way of journaling and making it useful to you as a, as a way to get to know yourself better and work through um, things that are maybe upsetting to you um, and find uh, inner peace, I guess, <laughs> inner comfort, maybe. Um, inner comfort, that's actually nice, yeah. Um. Yeah, so I've I've gotten back into that, just really sitting down and just writing. And every time I do it, I'm just feeling so relieved and calm. And there's always something that really surprises me in what I've written. <laughs> uh, so yeah, and journaling is just magical. And I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but um, yeah, just really, really enjoying the process of journaling right now. So yeah, I think that that writing journal is part of it. But then too, Megan Rhiannon is an inspiration to so many of us, I think. Uh, she's here on YouTube, but then she also has a, an Instagram account and she sells printables and stickers under the name of Petite Gloom. But something that I especially find inspiring about her way of journaling is that she allows herself to just enjoy keeping a notebook. And I hope I can explain that, but she does a lot of journaling about just topics that interest her. And she knows that just, yeah, engaging in the act of keeping uh, notes about a topic that you find interesting is something that is very rewarding. Yeah, I, I don't know if I'm explaining that well. Hopefully you can uh, 
relate to what I mean. But for example, I would describe myself as a reluctant cook. There are definitely times where I enjoy cooking and I love cooking. And I do appreciate preparing a meal for people. And I love how connective food can be. But there are also other days where I just mindlessly go through the motions of just trying to put food on a plate. <laughs> and I realize, though, that I do enjoy looking up recipes. If I, if I make the time to look into recipes and um, do research on ingredients, I do enjoy that. And I also know that I love keeping journals and I love keeping notebooks. There's just something fun in collecting pieces of information in a notebook and decorating it a little bit. And so I think I am going to set up a cooking journal so that I can reference all the recipes I look up more easily because, let's be honest, Pinterest, even though it is an organizational tool, it just can also be very overwhelming and all over the place. And I think it would also be fun to, yeah, keep notes on things such as different types of salts or different spices and where they originate and um, things like that. Or, um, you know, characteristics of uh, Indian cooking. I, I love Indian food. I would love to know more about the, the cultural um, context of it all. And so I think not only would the journal be fun, the, the act of keeping such a notebook would be fun, but I wonder if it would also make the act of cooking more mindful because I engage in the subject matter more. And if, for example, I learn new things about spices that I use or why a specific recipe works the way it does, then I think that would bring more attention to the, the cooking experience. Have you ever encountered uh, something similar where the, the, the fact that you journal about something, um, which is already a, a mindfulness practice, I suppose, um, then makes you in turn also more mindful in your day-to-day -day life, in the moments. Um, yeah, that would uh, really interest me if you've noticed that sort of back and forth of it all. But yeah, also just fun. <laughs> and so uh, here on screen, you can see that I move on to my other journal, my other notebook. It's a Midori A6 with blank pages. And this notebook has had several different lives, <laughs> uh, so diff several different life cycles. I keep starting things in it and then I change my mind um, to use it for something else. But that's okay. Sometimes you need several tries to find the right fit for a notebook. And so this time around, I'm trying to see if I just want to keep it as an overflow journal where I just keep things that don't fit in my Hobonichi daily journal. Of course, I think it's a very lovely or almost <laughs> romantic idea of having just the one, the one journal that keeps everything and that houses all my thoughts and all my memories and all my ephemera. But um, I don't think that that is very practical. Um, I don't think that I'll ever have just one notebook. I think there's just too many different things that I like. And for example, with having started the reflective long form writing only journal back up again, I wouldn't necessarily want to mix that with um, memory keeping or more decorative pages because then, I don't know, then that when you flip through the journal, it doesn't flow as well or I would be hesitant to maybe show the journal to friends and family and who knows you know sometimes in such a writing session you know things may come up that aren't uh something you want to keep 
flipping back through and revisiting over and over. Um, so I think overall it's more likely or more practical uh, for me personally to keep multiple journals. So yeah, I think this Midori as an overflow journal um, that might be might be where we're headed. And then, like I said, I think I'm going to set up a cooking journal. And then I don't know if you can quite tell in my Hobonichi daily journal that's laying to the side there. On the opposite page from the one I just journaled on, I actually made a spread about different ideas I have for setting up a ring planner or a ring journal. And that, of course, is um, something that a lot of people <laughs> have been starting up um, lately. And it seems to be very, very popular. And I must say, it is it is a very charming. I love seeing ring planner flip-throughs because there's something so personalized about them. And they always feel so eclectic because it's uh, such a nifty system for having different types of papers and different types of media even all collected in one place because you can just um, hold punch postcards or you can hold punch photos and put them in with your pages. Uh, so there's a lot of flexibility and just this, yeah, just the collection of things. <laughs> Why is that so charming? I don't know, but I love anything that feels collected. Um, uh, but I told myself that this impulse of just wanting it because it's cute didn't quite warrant me to spend the money on getting, um, yeah, the ring planner itself, but then also investing in a hole punch um, and stuff like that. So I wanted to make sure that um, if I did end up getting one, I wanted a little bit more of a concrete plan or idea um, for it. And so then I realized that something that would benefit from rings is a reference binder or reference journal. And so I could keep, for example, uh, swatch pages for some of my uh, markers and my watercolors. And so I could, you know, keep updating them or add to them if I get new markers and things like that. But then also maybe keep a collection of journal prompts that I would like to revisit in it. I think that would be really, really neat. So I might I might set that up. Do you have a rings planner or have you had a rings planner before? Or you, do you use it as a journal? Um, that is another thing that Megan Rhiannon has inspired s some or many people <laughs> to do. She definitely use it as well I guess she used it as as a both as a planner and as a journal um oh and I, I don't think I've mentioned but I, what I wanted to say about the cooking journal for example this idea of keeping a notebook just because it's fun to keep a notebook and to just write about topics rather than feeling like with journaling for example you obviously often journal about your thoughts or you're keeping up with memories um, that can obviously get a little tricky if you feel like your days aren't very busy or there's not a lot of things happening and then if you do feel though like working with stationery or playing with stationery and working in a notebook um, something like a topic-based journal then is really, really fun because you can still engage in the hobby and uh, take time for yourself to, yeah, sit down with your notebook and sit down with your stationery. And so I wonder if that is also where um, the charm of commonplace books come from. Um, if you're unfamiliar with what a commonplace book is, uh, I think the easiest way to describe it is that uh, you just keep it as a reference for other people's quotes or thoughts, book passages, 
things like that. It's a it's a collection of writing that uh, you want to keep for reference or for inspiration, but it's not necessarily um, writing that you've done yourself. It's not for processing your thoughts or for memory keeping, at least in the sort of strict sense of the word of what a commonplace book is. They've um, yeah also become uh, quite popular, I think, on YouTube lately. But yeah, I do see I do see the charm in them for sure. So maybe that's also something that I may or may not <laughs> end up adding to my lineup. I'm not sure. I haven't quite made up my mind. But I do feel like um, with my Hobonichi A6, uh, though I do sometimes keep references in there, like book passages or um, quotes, I do think it might be nice to also have a dedicated book for that. But I'll see about that. Here you can see me adding some watercolor to the background of the page, just like I added some watercolor to the um, background of my Hobonichi page. Um, I feel like the Hobonichi paper, the new Tomoe River paper, definitely reacts differently to watercolor. I might have mentioned that before, where I feel like it crinkles a lot more than it used to, and I'm getting really concerned about the bulk of the book. <laughs> Again, I find the idea of being in one book for a whole year so charming, but yeah, I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna be able to fit my entire year in that one book. And so I guess that too speaks to the need of maybe having or needing an overflow journal where I can be a little bit more free with tip-ins and thicker ephemera or yeah, adding more watercolor. Because I miss being able to add as much watercolor as I want to my pages. I just think it's quite lovely to have a little bit of color and texture on the page. It just, I don't know. I'm, I'm really into texture <laughs> lately. Um, it's quite lovely. So how is your journaling going lately? Have you added any new journals or notebooks to your lineup? Um, yeah, let me know in the comments. I'd, I'd love to chat about all the journals that you are currently using or if you have ideas on uh, new notebooks to bring into your lineup uh, yeah let me know i hope you are also enjoying this slightly longer video i certainly love when creators uh, upload these longer videos because um, it's just so nice to have just one video playing while I journal myself and just, yeah, being able to listen to somebody's thoughts um, on journaling and notebooks and being able to look up every now and again to see what they're working on. And it's just so nice for uh, body doubling um, if you just need to have something on in the background while you journal or get some work done. Um, so, yeah, I I definitely personally enjoy longer videos, and so I wanted to try and return the favor. <laughs> uh, yeah, I hope that uh, you're enjoying this format, but let me know if there's anything you would like to see in the future, uh, any video suggestions, or if you have questions about a specific... Uh, aspect of my my journaling practice yeah definitely feel free to let me know in the comments um here you can see me go through my sticker release book or my sticker album <laughs> uh, this has been treating me so well um it's definitely uh, a great addition to my to my journaling pouch <laughs> um, even though I don't keep this in a pouch um, but yeah I I feel like I use a more variety of stickers this way and uh, I, I like having them all 
laid out like this where I can easily see what I have, even though it does mean that I have to put in the time to cut them out previously or prior to being able to use them. But I often just um, take whatever I want to cut out um, with me on the couch and then just while I watch a movie or watch TV, I just snip away. <laughs> um, it's funny too because some of these stickers, I remember exactly what I was watching while I cut them out. And so sometimes I have these weird associations. It's like, oh yeah, this is the, you know, um, Survivor sticker <laughs> because I was cutting out a specific sticker sheet while watching Survivor, which by the way is a new obsession for me and my husband. We love watching Survivor. If you're unfamiliar with the show, I think it's it's very known in America, but for example, I didn't know about it. I didn't know it existed and it's been on the air since I want to say 2002-ish. So a long time for sure. Um, and it's very interesting because it's would probably be considered a game show even though what is most fascinating about it is the social interactions. Uh, so it's 20 people that live together on an island in a primitive shelter, um, and they get challenged in these uh, challenges. <laughs> and there they can win rewards or immunities because every time a tribe loses they have to vote a person out. But at some point, the people who are being voted out become the jury. So at the end, these people who got voted out determine who wins a million dollars. And so there's a lot of social strategy uh, that goes into determining who to vote out and how to make it a group decision and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm doing the show justice um, in explaining it that way. But yeah, it's it's a very engaging watch, even though it's sort of, I guess, easy TV. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Let me know if you're a Survivor fan. Um, I definitely now consider myself one. And so, yeah, um, that's a good show to use for cutting stickers. Here I am drawing out some clouds. Uh, for the longest time I could not decide or figure out what I wanted to do with this background, especially this corner right here where I'm just now drawing this cloud. Um, I tried several stickers and it just nothing quite fit. And so uh, whenever I find myself in the situation where I know the page needs something else, but none of my stickers work. I try to think, okay, can I draw something and just make something that is specifically tailored, I guess, to, to, the, to the page in question. And here I thought, well, if she has this cloud head, then um, maybe it would be quite fitting and cute to add some doodly clouds to the page. And I think it looks quite cute. This fountain pen is inked with troublemaker ink or i think the the company is just called troublemaker i always want to say troublemaker ink but i think it's just troublemaker and the ink color name is moon river which is such a wonderful name for an ink um, but yeah it's beautiful it's this sort of gray grayish pink i would say it it's almost a little bit like a colored pencil in that it shifts between like a gray and a pink and yeah it fits this color palette of this page very well but yeah thank you so much for sharing this time with me maybe you got your own journaling done or you just took a moment to rest um either way i appreciate you watching and until next time, happy journaling.